No need to make a plan. Your heart will be your compass. Just lift your sails in faith and know you will Good morning, everyone. It's a little bit warm in here today, but it will begin to cool down. I've got the AC crank way down so we can cool things down a little bit more. Um, but we're changing seasons, obviously. You know, here we are getting ready for, you know, the Christmas season, and it's 78 degrees outside. And <laughs> <laughs> but it will cool down, I anticipate, here fairly soon. But, you know, it reminded me of a story, for some reason, a story that I heard many years ago about a Methodist minister and a Baptist minister and a unity minister were out, uh, you know, they, they all wound up dying and they all went to hell. Yeah. yeah that, that mythical place that people talk about, you know, that's supposed to exist when you, when you but we don't believe in that. But anyway, this is not to spoil the story. <laughs> it, it, you know, there was a, the, the Baptist minister said, oh, well, I know why I'm here. I know I'm here. I just, you know, I couldn't stay away from, didn't wait, stay away from, I was, didn't wait, wait, stay away from the women, I guess you might say, or something like that. And the other one said, well, I know why I'm here. I couldn't stay away. The Methodist said, I couldn't stay away from the drink. I couldn't stay away from alcohol. And the unity minister said, this isn't hell and I'm not hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old classic unity story. I love that one, though. But, it, you know, it seemed pretty appropriate, actually. <laughs> well, you know, <clears throat> I've been really reflecting on the, the season, and we're, we're moving into that time that is traditionally known in many, uh, many circles as the Advent season in, the, in, the, in many church, uh, Christian groups and churches. And so I got to reflecting on that and thinking about what that means. And Advent really means the advent of Christmas or the birth of Christ. And in unity, we understand that to mean not just the birth of Jesus, the person, but an awakening of that divine light that is within every one of us. Jesus represents that Christ nature that is within every human being, within every one of us, that we are all created in the image and after the likeness of the divine. And so we're here to learn and grow and to experience and to express more of that light the celebration of Christmas really actually was uh, something that was developed uh, to kind of compete with the, the pagans of that time uh, to try and draw them into the, the Christian faith. And so much of its roots have to, has to do with, really is a part of paganism. And I don't see that as being a challenge because it really is all about the light. And the light really you will find not only You'll find it in almost every religion in the world that they talk about this understanding of coming back into the light. And it's a spiritual light that we're talking about. And it's an awakening of our unique spiritual nature. And every one of us has a very powerful and unique spiritual nature. And there are different aspects that we talk about and can grow in in, in, res in respect to that. In unity, one of the things that has been adopted over the years in many unity groups is an understanding of the teachings of Charles Fillmore about our 12 divine spiritual qualities. These are qualities that represent that unique divine nature that is within every one of us. It is our God-given potential, you might say. It's our possibilities for expressing and experiencing even more of our own unique divine nature and the birth of Jesus and the personhood of Jesus is someone who shows us and is an archetypal image and awareness of what's possible within humankind. We're all here to not necessarily worship this personage of Jesus, but to follow the example of one who expressed and, and is expressing through his archetypal ex uh, message, you might say, 
the possibilities of divine good. Jesus was a Jewish rabbi, and he was really not trying to create a whole new religion, but to really set an example for how people might really grow into another level of awareness in their own being and nature. And he grew out of this wonderful background that really helped him to develop and grow. And there's lots of evidence that he grew in ways that are, are, uh, had influences from around the world, from many different religions, as a matter of fact. So in Unity, many, many years ago, Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, who was a great mystic, who spent much time in prayer and meditation, but was also a scholar in many ways, a very much a biblical scholar. And he developed a way, and, and through his prayer and meditation and intuition and study, he studied the Kabbalah, he studied Eastern religions, he studied all of these major mystical teachings. And through his time of meditation and prayer, he got an awareness and an understanding that there are there are basically 12 unique spiritual qualities and characteristics that make up this divine nature that expresses through humankind, that expresses through the Christ consciousness, that expresses through Christ. And there are symbolic references to that throughout the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament. The 12 disciples were symbolic of these 12 spiritual qualities. He saw and was able to to glean from the writings that these qualities were in each of the 12 disciples, but also the 12 tribes of Israel. Of course, there's also the 12 signs of the zodiac, and the 12, number 12 is a very powerful spiritual and mystical number, and it represents completeness on several different levels. It represents completeness and wholeness on different levels. Does that make sense? And so we want to talk a little bit about what does it mean to develop and how do we go about developing these spiritual qualities within ourselves. We want to explore this. So to understand the 12 powers, you need to know that there are 12 expressions of one power. That is what we call in unity the Christ within us. The Christ is that perfect idea of humankind of what God created each and every one of us to be an expression doesn't mean that we're all the same because every one of us has a unique way of expressing that one, oneness. We have a unique experience and, and a way of expressing the, the wholeness and the oneness of the divine. And it, it shows up on every different face in ways that are very special and unique to each one. When unity and new thought speak of Christ, we're not generally, we're not talking about Jesus exclusively in mind. We're usually speaking of the divine potential that we're here ourselves to realize and to grow into and to express. And so Charles saw these 12 pathways for realizing this oneness and this truth. And yet he also recognized that these individual qualities and characteristics do not work in isolation. They work together, and generally they work together in, in pairs, but they also work together as a, as a collective, and that we, if we're short on any one of them in some way, or we haven't developed in some way in any one of them, we'll find that life is not necessarily in balance. And so we're here to learn more about how we can tap into these unique divine qualities. Now, I talk about these qualities, and I want to share that, you know, in unity we also understand that everything is basically, uh, there's only one nature, there's only one substance out of which all things are created in form. Charles Fillmore calls this divine substance. That divine substance is what makes up everything that we experience and see out here in the world, including our physical bodies, including our, uh, it, basically everything. More current terms, we talk about this substance as energy. That's a term that we use, and it seems to be way of uh, more. Um, it seems to be a more current way of understanding this divine substance, because energy really represents a vibration, right? Everything that is energy is a vibration, 
And so we talk about vibration, these divine vibrations that, that Abraham Hicks talks about, that each of these spiritual qualities, you might say, is a certain type of vibration. And it's a vibration that really helps to manifest and bring these qualities into existence and into experience in our world. And as we vibrate in harmony with these qualities, we find ourselves growing and developing those, and we experience things out here in the world that reflect that back to us. So <clears throat> there are 12 different qualities, and I'm going to take three of them each week and just talk a little bit about them, and we're going to do some time to reflect and meditate on these. All of our faculties, of all of our faculties, the one that Jesus spoke the most frequently about is the faculty the quality of faith. Faith, Paul says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. There's a lot of different ideas about faith and what it means. Many times people translate faith as simply meaning a belief in God, but it's much more than simply a belief in God. Faith is a spiritual quality that allows us to draw upon that which is invisible that we know exist and draw it into an expression that's out here in manifest form. So it's helping us to create something out of which, out of something that's not been created yet. It's that faculty in us that draws from the invisible out into the visible. But it is all, one aspect of faith, of course, is the energy of trust. There has to be a trust that this is possible. There has to be a trust and that there is something greater. There has to be a trust that there is, there is a greater good that's possible. And so we also are developing an energy. Faith is also an energy of trust of this, this higher order of things, higher awareness, higher understanding, higher experience of life and the possibilities that are within every one of us. Last year... 44 million people passed through Chicago O'Hare Airport, according to George Will in a Newsweek article, obedient to disembodied voices, uh, electronically amplified, telling them to get into the cylindrical membranes of aluminum to be hurled by a strange engines through the upper atmosphere. The passengers were content not to understand how any of it worked. And yet we think the 12th century was an age of faith. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about it, faith, when you get up in the morning, is what lets you know that when you put your feet out to the floor, there will be a floor there. <clears throat> That's the divine faculty of faith. It's simply an assurance and a knowing that is beyond the, the energy of fear and doubt. It's a powerful awareness. There was an atheist that was spending a, a quiet day fishing when suddenly his boat was attacked by the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> and in one easy flip, this beast tossed him up in the air, and the boat went with him, and he was up in the air, and he, and he said, oh my God, help me. And at that moment, everything froze, and he was suspended in air. And he heard this booming voice from the ethers that said, I thought you didn't believe in me. And he said, God, give me a break. I didn't believe in the Loch Ness Monster either. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we have to have evidence to, she to strengthen our faith. And, and uh, so, so one of the things that we do is faith is something that we can actually expand and grow and practice and build within ourselves. It is something that we can strengthen by taking steps of faith. I think one of the, I, I'll share with you one of the big steps of faith that has been absolutely a, a blessing and a miracle, in all honesty, was a step of faith that Julie and I took to leave the Northwest and to come to Austin, Texas, three years ago. And it has been such an amazing blessing for us to have taken that step and to know that there was something that was here for us that was, that was really calling us. And we took that step, and it really has manifested in so many magnificent ways in our lives. And then this wonderful leadership team and this spiritual community made a decision and took a step of faith to step out of being traveling vagabonds, <laughs> 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 
living out of our little bags, you know, that were, or boxes, you might say, and to manifest a home, a place for us to gather, to, to have fellowship, to be, not be rushed out after the service, and not mop up beer after the service. <laughs> Or before the service, yes, exactly. I meant to say before the service, didn't I? We didn't have beer after the service. <laughs> I have faith you understood what I meant. <laughs> so it really was that spiritual quality coming together of this group and the faith that they had and the possibilities for a greater experience of our celebrations together. And this, you look around and you're seeing the fruits of that. Thank you, God. So these are the energies and the qualities of faith. And Wendell Fred Wilkinson Housen wrote a, wrote a wonderful work that, uh, about developing your God-given powers. And she says there, there are basically seven steps that you can take to assure yourself that you are developing your energy of faith, your consciousness of faith. One is you have to have a scent. You have to be willing. I've heard the saying that faith is the willing suspension of disbelief. It's a willingness to let go of your doubts. It's a willingness to let go of your disbelief. So ascension. Then the next step is actually having and focusing on the belief. Focusing on what you truly want to experience as opposed to what you don't want to experience. This is the powerful use of the energy of faith. The next one, of course, is trust. And we mentioned that earlier. I uh, came across another great story about this. There was a man who got lost in the desert, and after wandering around, wandering around for many, many long days even, his throat was very dry, and the time was you know, very short for him. He knew that he had to find water, and so he made his way over and found and saw a shack in the distance and made his way to the shack, and there at the shack, the shack was deserted, but there was a well pump, and he saw... Next to the well pump, there was a bucket of water, and he think, thought, oh my, thank God, water. But there was a note on the bucket, and it says, pour all the water in the top of the pump to prime it. And if you do, this will get the, you all the water that you need. And so the man had a choice to make. If he trusted the note and poured the water into the pump, it's possible that he would not have any water to drink, and he would die. But there was a possibility that if he poured it all in there, it wouldn't work anyway. But he made the decision to pour the water into the well pump, to prime it. And then he began pumping, and nothing happened at first, but as he kept pumping, water started pouring out. And he had enough water not only to drink, but to take a shower. He washed himself, he cleaned, washed his clothes. He had water flowing. This is the faculty of faith at work. He had faith that this person who left that note was there as a blessing. You and I have notes laying around all over our lives. <laughs> How often are we paying attention to those notes and the possibilities of greater good? The possibilities of greater good rather than taking the immediate step of satisfying our, our wants and needs, sometimes there's a time and an opportunity to stretch, to, to experience more. The next spiritual quality we want to talk about is the spiritual quality of strength. The spiritual quality of strength. Developing our strength is uh, more than just physical strength. It is that as well. But strength is the vitality and the endurance of being, of heart and mind and spirit, to be able to endure. To, uh, the word that I like to really relate to the spiritual quality of strength is steadfastness. It's the ability to be able to stand firm in who and what we are, to stand firm in the truth that we understand and know, to be able to stand firm in um, moving in the direction that we are guided to move in, to move into the direction of a, a greater awareness of our unique divine nature. 
Strength is, of course, closely aligned with faith. In the symbology of the 12 disciples and the 12 qualities of mind, Jesus uh, gave us Andrew and Peter, Peter representing faith, and Andrew, his brother, representing strength. And those two operate together to help us to endure life's difficulties and challenges, but also to express more of the possibilities of good in our lives. So strength is consciously awakened first in our intellectual nature and then developed through our, our times of prayer and meditation. It's only through the, the practice of this energy, this quality of strength, that we really can begin to experience the ability to overcome. And that's how I really define strength. It's the ability to overcome whatever resistance we have, whatever challenges we find ourselves faced with. And we have strength in ourselves more than we ever realize. When we depend upon our own, inner, our own spiritual strength, we find that there's more strength than you and I ever imagined possible. And we find even going through the difficult challenges in our lives, if we will tap into that and know that there's some strength in us that is beyond our own individual ego strength, and we'll find that we're given power and strength to be able to overcome difficult resistance, uh, difficult experiences. So here's some steps to, to develop strength. One is non-resistance. Two, relaxation. You got you to relax through a lot of this stuff <laughs> or you don't get through it. And, am I right? <laughs> uh, three, infilling. There's a pouring in of strength when we open ourselves to it. There's a direction that we have. We, we, we experience a, a clear awareness or direction. Uh, incorporation of that energy, of that power. And then just really tapping into the experience of the, the, the strength that comes through us. It comes through us in those times when the car gets turned over and the child gets locked under it and the mother comes in and picks up the We've heard stories about this over and over again. How did that happen? How is it possible? The human doesn't have the strength to do that. But there is a strength that can come through us when it's necessary and when it's needed. And that can be within each and every one of us. It is within each and every one of us when we open ourselves and, and don't hesitate to use the power that can come through us. One day there were three men walking along and they came up to a raging river. It was a violent river. And they needed to get to the other side. They had to, they had some, they had to get to the other side. And they had no idea how to do it. And so one man got on his knees and prayed, God, please give me the strength to cross this river. And poof, God gave him massive arms and strong legs. And so he was able to swim about after he swam and he swam about two hours and was able to cross this raging river and get to the other side. And the second guy saw this and he said, wow, wow, well, I guess, I mean, I'll, I'll try that. So he said, God, please give me the strength and the ability to cross this river. And poof, God gave him a rowboat and he was able to row across the river and get to the other side. And so the third person, the third man said, wow. This, uh, this obviously works, so God, he said, please, God, give me the strength, the ability, and the wisdom to cross this river. And poof, God turned him into a woman, and she looked at the map and walked across the bridge. <laughs> I thought you ladies would like that. <laughs> but that leads into our next spiritual quality, and that is of wisdom, divine wisdom. Every one of us has within us the ability to have an awareness and a knowing and a, 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 a beyond our intellectual uh, judgments and uh, intellectual um, evaluations of things. One of the faculties most prized by Jesus was the gift of wisdom, a spiritual, a, a spiritual discernment. So he acted and spoke from that light within himself, and he said, judge with right judgment. In other words, we do have a faculty of judgment, and it's important for us to recognize we have the faculty of judgment, but what we have a tendency to do is 
use that faculty of judgment not to experience and to express discernment and wisdom, but to fritter away a lot of our energy in comparison and judgmentalism. I hate those judgmental people, don't you? <laughs> One of my favorite jokes. <laughs> we all tend to get stuck in this belief system of higher and lower, uh, better and worse. I'm, you know, I'm either up here and better than something or someone, or I'm down here and someone else is better than myself. That's not wisdom. Wisdom is understanding our connection and our oneness and our quality and not making those comparisons, but looking at the possibilities of a greater experience of connection, of good, of, of grace, of love and caring and compassion. This is where wisdom comes through. You've heard the saying, wisdom of babes. You know, you've heard that saying of out of the mouths of babes. And certainly, I know you've uh, heard the saying before. It comes from a simple understanding of the simplicity, often, of wisdom. So here's some wonderful words of wisdom from some young folks. Patrick, age 10, said, never trust a, a dog to watch your food. <laughs> Michael, 14, said, when your dad is mad and asks, do I look stupid? Don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, wise man that he was, also said, never tell your mom her diet doesn't work. <laughs> Randy, age nine, says, stay away from prunes. <laughs> One wonders how he discovered this bit of wisdom. <laughs> Kyoko, said, of age nine, said, never hold a dust buster and a cat at the same time. <laughs> And then Naomi, 15, said, if you want a kitten, start out by asking for a horse. Oh. <laughs> Lauren, age nine, said, felt markers are not good to use as lipstick. <laughs> and Joel, 10 years old, said, don't pick on your sister when she's holding a baseball bat. <laughs> and Eileen, age eight, words of wisdom, never try to baptize a cat. <laughs> So to develop our faculties of wisdom, one of the things that Winifred Hausman says is that one of the first steps is to unlearn what we know. To unlearn what we know. The enemy of wisdom is what we think we know. When we become so enmeshed in what we think we know, we're no longer open to experiencing the possibilities of a greater knowing. And so we have to be willing to oftentimes unlearn all of the things that we think are true, are real, are the reality. I love that saying, you know, reality, what a concept. <laughs> reality really is something that is continually unfolding in our experience in our lives. And you and I have the ability to tune into what the greater reality is in each and every given moment. But we're only able to do that the moment that we're willing to not necessarily be too attached to seeing and experiencing life, other people, circumstances, and situations the way we think it's supposed to be. The way we think it's supposed to be is a way that we have uh, programmed into ourselves of how we think it's supposed to be, and we become attached to that. And it's not until we really begin to let go of how we think it's supposed to be that we can be open to the possibilities of what it can be. Does that make sense? So letting go and unlearning. So the next step is in learning. Learning is really opening yourselves up to the wisdom, the inspiration, and guidance of spirit is one of the way I love to say it, of being revealed how this can be for me. I love the saying, it's pro-noia. The universe is, is loaded in your favor, basically. The universe is out to bless you. <laughs> and the, we, we don't experience that. When we're locked into how, how we think the world is supposed to be. 
So learning and then acknowledging the good, acknowledging the possibilities, acknowledging the presence of something greater, a greater force for good, acknowledging that there's something greater that is possible for us. And then listening and reasoning out ways that we can understand and experience that knowing. Reason is the bridge to wisdom because it leads you into a higher expanded, uh, uh, expanded knowledge for that matter. Uh, new concepts, new ideas, new inspiration come through. And then there's insight. We can simply... It's those light bulbs that go off, the ahas that you get when you are open to, to a greater knowing of something good. When we're not locked into a particular way of seeing a person, a, a situation, a circumstance, we get insights that can bring us into a possibility that we hadn't been able to experience or see before. The insight becomes complete and enables us to, uh, to know immediately that there's a greater reality for us. And then it moves into what we call knowing. You know that knowing that you know because you know because you know? You know that one, don't you? There is within every one of us this sense, this experience, this knowing of, what we, uh, of a greater truth, a greater possibility in life. So as we look at and go through our holiday season, and this week specifically, I'm going to ask you to think about these three qualities, and we're going to take some time in a moment to meditate on those a bit. Faith and strength and wisdom. And ask the question of yourself, how can I open myself to experience more of these divine qualities in my life, and how can I apply them to my daily life circumstances? How can I be open to knowing that there's a, a greater quality and potential within me by practicing thriving and growing in these spiritual qualities? <clears throat> hope you have some fun with that this week and, and hope you are open to allowing those qualities to develop and grow in you and reflect on them in ways that give you an inspiring, uplifting knowing of your own unique divine nature. Let's move into our meditation time. As you move into that place of stillness, of peace, I invite you to take a nice deep breath and begin to relax the body temple. As we relax the body temple, we open our hearts and minds, our whole being, to an awareness of these qualities of spirit, these qualities that allow us to experience and express more of our unique divine potential. Breathing into the heart space, expanding that heart with feelings of love and joy and wisdom and compassion and care. We tune into our faculty of faith. The faculty of faith According to Charles Fillmore is right in the center of our head. It's an ability to see beyond appearances and to draw into our experiences the good that we know is always there for us. It is a trust and an assurance. <clears throat> and our affirmation for faith is, faith blesses my day and paves my way. Faith blesses my day and paves my way. 
and just see the way made clear with faith and assurance of a greater good, a greater experience of abundance, faith in the healing power of spirit, faith in the ability to experience love and relationship connections, faith that all things are working for our good. Through that Christ light, that Christ faculty of faith, I am assured that all things are working for my good. And I awaken to the Christ light of faith. tune our energy, our awareness, our consciousness into the vibration of strength, spiritual strength, spiritual strength that translates into strength of heart and mind, but also strength of body. We tune into that realm of vitality and steadfastness and endurance and that ability to move beyond our limitations, to move beyond our fears, our doubts, be beyond all resistance. to the Christ strength in me. That light of strength. And through that light and that strength, I have the strength to accomplish all that is mine to do. Silently affirm and feel this for yourself. Be open and willing to let this be absolutely true for you. I have the strength to accomplish all that is mine to do. I also have the strength to let go of that which is not mine to do. of wisdom. Through the Spirit of God within, that Christ light within, I am guided by divine wisdom in every thought, every word, and every action. I open my whole being to that assurance that I am being guided, that I have within me the ability to discern what is highest and best. And that discernment comes from a knowing that there is something greater at work. I judge with right judgment, with a discernment of oneness a discernment of connection, a discernment of wholeness, a discernment of rightness, that all things are in an, in an order and that all is working for a greater good.
I let go of how I think things are supposed to be. And I open myself to the good that they can be. And I give thanks for the divine quality of wisdom expressing through me. Let a feeling of gratitude come into your heart for these spiritual qualities of faith and strength and wisdom. And know that you are right now being uplifted, that you are being expanded and you are growing in your experience and knowing and expression of these beautiful spiritual qualities. Know that this is so right now. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Blessed Spirit. Amen. Let your awareness come back into this room, this time, this place. Let yourself take a nice deep breath. Take another nice deep breath. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. <laughs>